Bonjour everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna do the same kind of video as yesterday with the tech but that time with the Mount Rush event because I have a ton of clock winders and a ton of red diamonds. Yes, I spent a lot in the past and especially on that event. You probably noticed that on my previous video and so I have a ton of diamonds to spend. If we open the Mount Rush event, you can get a ton of hammers, 8,000 after completing each round. You need to spend 800 clock winders to complete one round, so 3200 in total to complete every round and get the 8000 hammers. So without spending money, there are a few ways to acquire some clock winders. First of all, you have the Chrono Tower, you can get a ton daily. Then you have the shop, you can buy some extra using your diamonds and this is what I'm gonna do. I can buy 17,000. So let's do that. Now I have a 27k. You can buy one key every day in the family shop, but I don't recommend to do that because you are only gonna get a few clock winders thanks to one key. But the best things to buy in there are the feather coins. You have a five daily, you can get 50 for 5,000 medals a day. And you have that one daily for 2,500. So I think this is the best thing to concentrate on. And then you have the gold. To power up your lamp but today we also have the tech rush event and so daily i am buying the drills and the bombs and finally you have another way to get some clock winders this is the parking walls it's gonna depend on the mounts you are gonna park if you want to know what you can get with every mount you have in the game you just have to come back there go to remodel and then you can have a look to all the mounts even the ones you don't have on your account Sometimes you can get some random dungeon key and get one for the chrono tower. Same for that mount, but you need to pay to have these mounts, right? So you can get some chrono keys and clock winders with the plane. Sometimes you can get a chrono tower key thanks to the gourd. And then you need some extra paid mounts. If you have the cloud, you have a chance to drop a chrono key. If you have the sword, you can get some as well and some clock winders. And if you have the Hot Wheels, you have a chance to drop a Chrono Key as well. But you have also some scrolls, so that mount is pretty cool. Oh, and before upgrading my mount, I have something more to say about the parking wars. I bought different lamps, just to experience that. And so I can tell you today that you can select only one at once. So you can have that bonus only one time. For example, if I use that one, I'm gonna have 5% more parking coins on my own parking. But if I want to use that one, I have to replace the other one. And I'm gonna have a 3% more chance to obtain some adventure rewards. And if you want more stuff like keys for dungeons, scrolls or clock winders, it's gonna be better to upgrade the adventure rewards first. So that one, that lantern, is better than the other one in my opinion. Okay, so 22,500k power, 2,763 HP, 62,500 final attack, and 20,859 defense. Let's start upgrading that. So 1,680 to get only one star. I am tier 6, 3. So let's upgrade it one time. And let's check my power. I got 100k more power with only one level. And if I check my stats, I got 10 more HP, 270 more attack, and 100 more defense. So let's continue. Look at the increase. 2000 already for the next star. 400 more. So let's upgrade that. 400 more again. 2900 now. It's increasing so fast. Look at that. 3480. 4,000, 5,000, and another 6,270 to unlock the next mount. So in fact, I'm lacking some. But look at the stats increase when you are going to unlock the next tier. This is insane. I claimed all the rewards in the rush event. So I have a few more diamonds. I can come back in there and buy a few extra clock winders. There we go, 260 more. And I'm still lacking 570. And so I have no choice. I have to go back in the shop. And I know that in one of my previous videos on the big event, I say that I 
already used the budget of the month. But you are so many players to support my channel. Thank you so much to everyone. And so now today I have a bit more budget to spend on the game to progress faster and show you more stuff. And some of you want to know how much power increase can we get with the tech, with the mount rush event, with this kind of stuff. And so this is the goal. So I'm gonna try to progress a bit faster to give you the best advice I can. So let's do that. And don't forget to use up to it as always. If you are spending in the game, you are saving a ton of money thanks to all the cashback you get when you buy some packs. So there we go. I have a bit more diamonds as well. So I'm gonna take that pack too. Then that one and I should have enough. Uh, let's check the power increase first. 23 million 200. So I got a big power increase so far. And if I check my final stats. For now I have 90 more uh, final HP. Almost 2000 more attack. And 700 more defense. But the increase I'm gonna get now is gonna be insane. And I'm gonna have 5% more evasion. So I unlocked a new mount. And look at that, the stats all doubled. And then I'm gonna need 7,800 to increase one level. I have 23,315k power. And if I check my global stats, it gave me way more than before. This is huge. I started with 2,763 final HP. Now I have almost 600 more. I had a 62,515k attack and now I have 75k, 13,000 more. And I started with 20,859 defense and now I have more than 25,000, 4,300 more defense. And now if I check my appearance, this is the mount, pretty cool. And if I check the rewards I can get with that, I'm gonna have some scrolls, hammers, soul crystals, fruits, dungeon keys, Lamps or tickets is giving almost everything at once and 20 coins per minute. This is great. That one is great for the parking walls. And talking about the mounts, now I am top one. I hope that I'm gonna remain top one because I really do want to have some Skyrider passes. I have been saving all my Skyrider passes for more than one month. I bought absolutely no mounts since the beginning and I'm targeting the Cloud Drifter. Some of you are asking me why I am not buying the Pyre Breaker because I am an archer and I'm gonna have more crit rate and crit damage over time. In fact, this is cool to have a bit more crit rate and crit damage over time, but at the beginning of the fight, you are getting disarmed for 3 or 4 seconds, depending on the relics the opponent is using. And so, after that, you are gonna have, what, 4% extra crit rate and 20% more crit damage? This is not a lot. And the fight is gonna last 10 seconds maximum around that, so the increase you are gonna have thanks to that is not gonna be that huge in PvP or in the Abyss. Or in the blazing cave. But it can be great on Grumpy Big Head if you can survive. Or in the cross server showdown versus the boss you have in the city of light. But this is just my opinion. I'm gonna have 10% more global attack forever. I don't even need to equip the mount. I'm gonna have the 10% extra global attack. So if I enter a fight with that, at the beginning I'm gonna deal more damage with my skills kill clones faster and if I kill clones before the end of the disarm I'm gonna be safer after and after the disarm I'm still gonna have the 10% extra global attack and I'm also gonna have a bit more attack because I'm gonna have more skill crit rate 10% and I'm also using the dragon pal and so it's giving to me 20% more skill crit rate so in fact I'm gonna have 30% skill crit so even if I am playing an archer the skill damage are gonna be really nice and after the disarm, I'm still gonna have a 20% more attack for 1 or 2 seconds, which is better than having only 4% crit rate and 20% crit damage in my opinion. If you accumulate that with the mount effect. Let me know what you think about all of these in the comment below. Have a nice day guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and see you in the next video, bye bye.